everyone. Welcome back to Winance Wednesday. This is our weekly financial independence live stream show and podcast where we talk about all the ways that we can transform our lives through our finances. And we do that by learning how to spend our money more intentionally, how to grow and build wealth through investing, and how to live more intentional, more fulfilling lives. We are your host and personal finance educator, Stephanie and Marie. We are also two sisters on the path to financial independence. And if you are new to Winance and you're watching us on YouTube, go ahead and click the like and subscribe button. That will help more people just like you find our content. And we are also in podcast form. So if you're listening in podcast land, well, hello. <laughs> and do us a favor and go ahead and click the subscribe button. And if you find value in our content, please leave us a five-star rating and review again so more people just like you can find our content um, and get on the path to financial independence. All right, so I'm sure you have all noticed something's a little bit different today, or uh, whatever time you were watching this <laughs> or listening to this. Yes. Um, and we are not live, you know, that's our first not live pre recorded episode, but we did it because we have something special for you. So, a couple weeks ago, we had the opportunity to interview Scott Henderson, who is the marketing manager of Cube Money. And you guys might remember we discussed Cube Money before. It is a new um, a new company and a new budgeting app that Marie has, you know, fallen in love with. <laughs> and even I, you know, it's it's piqued my interest as well. And so, just as a refresher, it's a digital envelopes app that basically ties budgeting with real time purchases. So a lot of apps, you plan your budget ahead of time, and then you know you're out in the world spending your money, and you're you know you have to rely on your own, you know, remembering how much money you do or don't have to spend on a certain category and this and that. Well, Cube is here to help you with that and alleviate having to remember exactly how much money you're supposed to be spending per category. And so we'll go into all the details about it. Um, I, I found it really interesting. I you know it was a really great interview with Scott. So we wanted to share that with you. As you're listening to the interview, um, you know if it sounds like it's an app that's for you or a service that piques your interest, we actually have a special offer for you. If you go to winancefi.com slash cube, that's Q-U-B-E, and enter in our promo code, which is winance25, you will get 25% off a lifetime membership of Cube. And Marie is already a lifetime membership member. Right. You know, she is a believer. A, a, what I, do I call you? A cube believer. <laughs> a cube believer. <laughs> Yeah. I am definitely, you know, as soon as I heard about this, so the funny story is um, a few years ago, I actually used to talk about this concept for a while was like, you know, there needs to be some kind of way to tie budgeting to point of sale so that when you're at the cash register or you're online and you're about to make a purchase, you have to choose where that money is coming from within your bank account. Um, and I actually tweeted this out like over a year ago about, you know, oh, somebody needs to come up with this. And then um, earlier this year, actually a few months ago, I somehow stumbled upon Cube Money and realized my dream had come true. <laughs> somebody <laughs> invented the thing that I've been wishing for. Um, and I just love that they are tying budgeting with banking um, together. I think this is like truly going to be a game changer. I've mentioned that before. So, um, you know, I think this is really going to be beneficial to a lot of people in our audience who are struggling to figure out budgeting, a budgeting system that works for them. And it's not you. It's just that the right tools have not come along until now. So. Um, I think without any further ado, why don't we go ahead and share our interview with Scott Henderson from Cube Money. All right, here we go. Here's Scott. All right. Well, Scott, thank you so much for joining us in the Winant studio today. Um, so why don't you go ahead and give us a little bit about your background and introduce yourself to our audience? Yeah, sounds great. I appreciate you giving me the chance to come on and talk about Cube Money. So a little bit about me and my background. So I've been interested in personal finance since I was a teenager. Um, I've been reading books, you know, like Dave Ramsey's Total Money Makeover, um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and T. Harv Eker's like Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. And my background where I came from, you know, I didn't come up with a lot. I'm a single mom with five kids and I just wanted to figure out how to create a better future for myself and for my future family. And so personal finance had a big had a big part to do with that. And so I was 
always interested in saving and working hard and all that kind of stuff. Um, and so over the years, I've been really involved in the financial services industry, really in like four ways. Um, I worked as an accredited financial counselor for a couple of years. I've actually worked as an investment advisor um, for an RIA for a couple of years. Um, I have my own personal finance blog that I've ran for a couple of years and just creating you know, an online business and affiliate marketing in the personal finance space. And then I'd made a, I guess you could say pretty drastic shift last year into the financial like technology space. Um, I've always been interested in looking for the best tools that are gonna help people change their financial behavior. And I met, you know, the guys at Cube Money and really aligned with their vision and what they were doing and decided to join the team last year. Um, and it's been an awesome ad adventure and journey getting to this point. And, you know, the fact that the app works, it's out, it's, it's available. It's, it's truly, we're building something truly remarkable and uh, just really excited about it. So I've, over the years, I've been able to combine my interest with personal finance and my background with you know business and um and really combine them into what i'm doing now with cube money so it's been fun that's awesome yeah i would yeah, love to love be able to have my career also combined with my passion you know that's that's my goal but uh yeah that's awesome that you've been able to do that yeah it's been fun yeah, and I love um, also sort of your background, you know, growing up with some financial insecurity, you know, Stephanie and I definitely experienced that ourselves. And, you know, I think that that's an important voice and perspective to have in the personal finance space. You know, we hear from a lot of people who are sort of grew up as natural savers, and maybe they learned a lot of really healthy financial skills from their family. And yet there's a lot of us who, you know, didn't necessarily grow up with all of that and have sort of found our way towards um, learning the things that we didn't necessarily grow up with. So um, can definitely relate to your background there. Um, so obviously you mentioned Cube Money and how excited you are. And for our audience, you know, they certainly know that I'm very excited about it. Um, you know, this is something that I think is sorely missing from the market. So why don't you actually talk to us about what Cube Money actually is? Yeah, First and foremost, like I said, we really are building something remarkable that doesn't exist in the marketplace. And really, the cash envelope budgeting system has been popular for years. It's still talked about a lot with people. But the fact is, cash is obsolete. It's becoming obsolete. Um, and the cash envelope system is just really hard to manage and stick to over a long period of time. Anybody that I've talked to is like, yeah, I did that for about three months and then decided it was just too much to, to handle. So Cube Money really is, it's a digital banking system that's actually patented. We just received our patent recently that simplifies the cash envelope system and makes it easy to manage your money online without you know having the hassle of carrying around cash. And really it empowers people to stick to a budget and save money, which is what everybody wants to do. And when you talk about different budgeting systems or budgeting apps, they all talk about, hey, we're gonna help you save money and stick to a budget. But I've never seen anything as quite powerful and effective as Cube Money is because there's really, it, it brings limits and it helps you be intentional with your spending and it's super easy to do. So okay. that's kind of in a nutshell. So, you, like you said, it's similar to the old school physical cash envelope system, um, but I guess how do you guys actually apply that to the digital world? How do people actually still, you know, have buckets of money that they have a certain amount that they can spend? Like, I guess, how does it differ from a physical system and how does that translate to an, an app, basically? Yeah, so the way the core system is still the same. You're able to you know, deposit your money and divide it up into these different buckets or cubes is what we call them. And they have limits. I mean, just like in the past or people that are doing it today, the money that's in your cash envelope, once it's gone, it's gone. Mm -hmm. And you can't really spend more. And it helps you realize like when you're at the grocery store, like, okay, how much more do I have in my grocery queue or my envelope? And you have to make those conscious decisions and it helps you stick within certain limits that you've set for yourself. So the way that it sort of takes that system online and makes it easier is 
is you create an account. You're actually opening up a physical bank account with Cube Money. Um, we don't actually store your money. We partner with um, a bank that's been around for over 100 years. They're very well known in this space. And when your money is deposited, it's actually with them and it's FDIC insured. We take security, you know, very important. We understand we are new and we want to build people's trust and help them, um, you know, believe in what we're doing and, and know that their money is protected. So that's a big concern some people have is mm -hmm. they like cash and they're a little bit concerned like, okay, well, where's my money actually going to be stored? The thing is, is with most banks, you can create multiple bank accounts, but you might have a fee associated with that or some sort of minimum requirement or you know automatic transfer going into that bank account to avoid fees. Or you open up a bunch of credit or bank accounts with your credit union, yes. but that might be local. And if you move or there's just, they're not as involved in the technology as maybe you'd like them to be. So there are some drawbacks with other systems. And if you do have multiple bank accounts, you might have multiple credit card or debit cards that are associated with that multiple bank account numbers. It just becomes a hassle to, ha to handle. Mm -hmm. So cube money is one bank account and one debit card. And it's really easy to manage. So when you go in, you can create as many cubes as you want for those different spending purposes, like groceries, transportation, you know, entertainment, those types of things. And when you go to spend, you actually have to open up your phone and select which cube you're going to be spending from. The money immediately becomes available on your debit card. And then as soon as the transaction goes through, literally within less than a second, it updates real time on your phone, showing you how much you have left in that cube. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So I, that's really how you're kind of controlling people's spending in a way, or not controlling, but at least you know helping them control their spending. So it really sets that physical limitation on what they can spend and really helps them stick to their budgets. Okay, that's pretty cool. Exactly, and I've been using it for all my discretionary spending. I've used it mm -hmm. twice today and it just works flawlessly. I mean, you just open up your cube, you give them the card, they swipe the card and the cube immediately closes and updates. It's that simple. Okay. That's really great. And uh, you know, I can definitely relate to having the multiple checking accounts and multiple debit <laughs> yeah. cards because that was a hack I was using for a while, this sort of bucket system. And it works, but it is very complicated and it's a lot of work to keep up with it. And it's a lot of maintenance. And I think a lot of people are looking for to spend less time sort of managing their money. They want things more streamlined. They want mm -hmm. things um, a little bit simpler. Um, so let me ask you this. I know you guys are in beta testing right now um, with some of your early users. What are the beta testers saying right now? What are their reactions? Do they feel like they're saving money? Um, do they feel like it's helping them? Yeah, so we've actually, we've got a Facebook group right now. It's got about 100 beta testers in it right now. And it's, I'm actually very surprised how active it is. There's a lot of people in there that are, they're very serious about this. And we love it because it's like, wow, we never even thought about that. And they're providing us great feedback. So I think so far, a lot of people have been very pleased with where we are with the app. So that's... Sorry, I, I, you cut out a little bit and then I'm like, okay, I lost my train of yeah. thought. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry <about> that. <laughs> right, so you were talking about um, the developers are, are working on some of the features yes. and, and obviously some of the, the things that you already have existing and, and trying to do improvements. Correct. And that's the thing is, is the basic functionality works flawlessly, but like there's so much more to come. And that's what a lot of the beta testers, you know, are excited about. It's like, hey, I know the product's good, but like, when is this coming? And when is this coming? And it's like, yeah. some things are still in the works. Like we're not yeah. perfect, but what we have so far, it works. I think the only thing people, you know, have been complaining about is the fact that it takes a little bit too long to transfer money to your Q money account from your bank. And mm -hmm. then it takes a little bit too long for your debit card to, to show up um, in the mail. So other than that, the transactions and the ledgering and all that stuff and the transfers works great. And we've gotten really good positive feedback. Um, we're listening to it. We're trying to iterate and change as many things as we can to actually make a big push. So we're hoping to make a big push the beginning of January 2021 to really mm -hmm. take this to the, to the public. So right now, anybody that's getting into the app is on the waiting list or they've purchased lifetime membership and 
yeah, so some, some exciting things coming and there's really a lot of potential for it too. That's pretty awesome. So I know from, I'm, I'm a test engineer in my you know, trained art <laughs> and right. I've been in software testing for over 10 years now. And so I definitely understand the, the woes of a, a new application and a new yeah. service and all the features that everybody wants. And it takes time to have to build those out. But I know that you guys already have some few different features um, besides just having a single person account and that ones that you're working on. So what are some of the different features that people can look for in their uh, cube accounts? Like, are they able to have join accounts? Are they able to do things with their children, um, you know, and have like a card or a linked account with their kids? Perfect. No, great question. So right now, and I guess this kind of gets into how the pricing structure works as well. Um, so we have a basic free version. You'll have the ability to create an account for free. You'll have up to 10 cubes. Um, it will be limited on what you could do but it's going to give you the ability to manage your money the way that you that you want you know for younger people maybe that are just getting started college students but for those people that do want a more holistic approach or trying to get as much out of it as possible if you're managing you know relationships and you've got to figure out how to tie money into all that which a lot of us do um you might want to look at some of our other options so we've got an eight dollar a month option for which is premium which is really, it could be geared towards individuals, but it's it's really geared towards couples and, and partners that want to manage their money together. So when you sign up together, you'll get two debit cards, um, you know, each with your own name on it, and you'll share the same cubes. So you guys could decide to have your money, you know, direct deposited into your, your same account. You'll also have the ability to have um, shared cubes or even hidden cubes. Like if you've got a cube mm -hmm. that you don't want your partner to know about, you can also do that. You can say this one is a private cube. Um, and so that's that's something that's great. But the other features that come with the premium are things like, um, you know, eventually we're going to have high yield savings. There are some, mm. there are some uh, more legal and regulation things that you have to worry about when it comes to that. But that is our goal is to have savings cubes and you'll earn a, you know, a good APY on your savings in, the, in premium. Um, the other thing too is like peer-to-peer -peer transfers. So I could send money from me to you instantly, no fees, just like you do Venmo. Oh, nice. And so it's, it's a really easy way to transfer money. It's, we wanna make it kind of social. And the other thing is you'll have what's called a shared cube. So let's say you two wanna save up for a vacation together. And instead of like, booking the vacation, putting on your credit card and then paying it off when you're done, you can actually say, okay, let's set a goal to save up $1,500 in the next six months. Let's each put a certain amount of money into that cube. So when we, you know, six months down the road, you've got the money saved up together in a cube that you can both spend from. So mm, wow. it's kind of a, a socialized aspect of it too, that we're hoping um, will we'll take off for some people. And then uh, the third thing is, is is our family features. So we've get we've actually got a lot of people that have purchased the lifetime membership um, that are interested in the family features. And this would be fifteen dollars a month for parents with kids um, that want to give their kids uh, debit cards. Most parents will teach their kids through cash, you know, mm -hmm. and I think cash is very powerful when it comes to teaching. Um, but we also want to enable parents to help them teach their kids to save and budget by giving them their own debit card. They mm -hmm. may have their own app. And when you, as a parent, log into your app, you'll be able to see your kids' cubes. Um, you can transfer money to them instantly. So like if they do a chore, you can just pay them to their cube. Um, and so then they kind of feel this sense of empowerment, like I've got my own debit card, it's got a name on it, and I'm just a, you know, a, a teenager or something. <laughs> So with that, you can have up to 10 kid cards and it can also be for things like nannies, for grandparents, mm. for anyone else in your family that you want to give a certain budget for and you don't want them to spend any more than that. Mm -hmm. um, and you can transfer money instantly uh, onto their card or you know, if they had their own account, you could still transfer money to their account. So that's, that's really exciting for a lot of parents because there are some things out there that that are geared towards parents and, and kids, but not a lot. Yeah. 
Yeah, and that's one of the things that definitely piques my interest because I have a six-year-old and we're now starting to do allowances with him and chores and I never have cash on me. And so I literally have to keep a running tally of what we owe him. So he's learning about like sending invoices and, and making sure he gets paid. So that would definitely save me a big, like a big headache. That's awesome. Having to like dry erase board, right? Okay, yeah, we owe you $5 this week. You know? And he goes in and erases it and writes in a bigger number. And exactly, he has a, a zero onto the end. He's like, oh, definitely yeah. $50. Yeah. Oh, that's great. that's really that's really funny. Um, so switching gears a little bit here. So Scott, you know, we Stephanie and I are both um, part of the financial independence community, and I'm not sure you might be fairly familiar um, with this movement. Um, and so, you know, I think cash flow is still something that even people who are you know, aggressive savers and who are, um, you know, investing their, dis you know, as much of their discretionary income as possible. Um, but cash flow is still some, an area where a lot of people struggle and try to tighten up on finances. So how do you think Cube can help people who are um, trying to achieve financial independence? No, it's, it's a great question because I, I love talking with people in the FI community. I'd actually consider myself a member of it as well. I've been interested in it for years. Um, mm -hmm. I'm reaching, I'm striving to achieve financial independence myself. That's awesome. Hopefully by the time I'm 40, uh, that's the goal. Um, but I mean, I guess just to give you some background, I don't know what podcasts or groups you guys are a part of, but mm -hmm. I've been uh, interested in Choose FI for a while. Oh, yeah. um, yep. I've met the guys at FinCon. Mm -hmm. um, actually, was I hadn't been on the podcast, but was mentioned in it. And uh, it's just been a cool community to be a part of. And it's when I first learned about financial independence, I'm like, okay, this like these people kind of get it. There's a whole yeah. nother way of, of living yeah. where it's not just about making a bunch of money or it's not just about cutting back on your expenses. It's, yeah. it's how do you do both, but continue to live intentionally and find joy mm -hmm. in the journey. So like, I mean, I, I'm all about it. That's why I say that. So how I think Cube Money will help is there's really there's really some interesting things I think when when it comes to financial independence how people will try to achieve financial independence. Obviously, it's it's increase your income and lower your expenses and save the difference. It's simply put as that like that's how you're going to get there. But what I've found is a lot of people don't have a high enough income mm. or they don't know how to lower their expenses or at least track their expenses consistently. Mm -hmm. Sure, you've got some of those people that are like super extreme that they were just born frugal, they can do that. But for the majority of people, it's really hard. It's really mm -hmm. hard to, like it's, you want to achieve it, but then all of a sudden 10 years goes by and it's like, oh my gosh, like I'm not where I thought I would be. Yeah. And I think with, with Cube Money, it helps you, instead of being reactionary to what happens in your finances, it's you become proactive. Yeah. And what that means is you decide, okay, here's my limits. Um, what we've actually seen is it, it sometimes it allows people to spend more money because you've got those people in the financial independence community that maybe might struggle with their relationship because they're a tightwad. And they don't, they feel so bad spending money because they're, they want to reach that goal of reaching financial independence that sometimes they feel like oh, I can't spend money on anything else that brings me happiness. So I think mm -hmm. we've seen two things with cube money is it, is it actually helps people and couples plan for things that they value because you want to start setting aside money for those, those things that you enjoy. When you do go to spend that money, it's totally non guilty spending because it's like, okay, we've set this money aside. This is for this purpose. And when we spend it, it feels great. Versus yeah. let's just throw everything we can, you know, into VTSAX and then <laughs> like have nothing else left to spend over. And then you right. just kind of like, you just kind of dread life and yeah. you're just hoping to reach some number in your bank account and then you're going to be happy, which we know isn't necessarily the case. Yeah. So that's what I think with cube money is it helps you just be intentional with your spending to a point where you can say, okay, I'm putting money towards things that I value, but I'm also not going crazy on the things that I don't value. Like there's, there's actually an article I'm working on. It's 
called three financial superpowers that cube money gives you. And there's one thing that there's three things really that nobody else does. And I guess I could get into this a little bit more if we need to, but it's kind of like off topic from what your question was, but (laughs) you can, you can actually stop the pump when you're filling up gas based on what's in your cube. So if you've got $25 in your transportation cube, if you're filling up gas, the pump will stop at $25. Even wow. if you have, even if you've got hundreds of dollars in your cube account, mm-hmm. it just pays attention to what's in that cube. Yeah. The, the other thing too, is you can, you can cancel those free subscriptions that you forget about without even thinking about it. So you can actually mm-hmm. give a company your, um, debit card information and we've all been there where we sign up for a free trial and then 30 days later we totally forgot to go cancel and we get yes. charged for the first month <laughs> too often yes <laughs> unless you authorize it the company cannot bill your card and so you don't even have to worry about it unless you say okay this money's coming out at this point um the, the company could try to bill your card four times and it will just say declined declined wow. declined because you haven't enabled it it. um yeah and then the the third thing was i'm trying to remember oh you can actually choose when your debit card um is declined so if you are at the store and you lose your card and somebody picks it up and tries to spend it they can't actually spend money unless they hack into your phone so it makes it really secure um Mm -hmm. because you have to open a cube to to be able to spend money. So those, those three things, along with a lot of other things, I think help you save money, avoid subscriptions that you didn't plan. Um, and then help you just be intentional and help you stick within limits when it comes to spending money, which I think a lot of people could use in the financial independence community is, is an extra layer of financial superpower. Yeah, definitely. So it sounds like there's a ton of features that, you know, are beyond just budgeting and, and you know, having an envelope, you know, a digital envelope system that really yeah. can help people. And I think that's definitely what people are paying for, in my opinion, from what I'm hearing. That's what you're paying for, because there's a lot of budgeting tools out there that are free tools and people in the FI community and just even in just general personal finance, they they use these tools, but I know a lot of times in these communities, we tend to not want to pay fees for things, you know, you either want free or discount or whatever. And so I guess that's kind of the thing is, um, I, I suppose that's how you would talk to potential customers about the benefits that they're getting for the fee that they're paying per month or if they're signed up for the lifetime membership. Um, I, I guess, have you come across any people who have been like, uh, I don't really know if I wanna pay for that. Like, I will say I'm a person who's fee adverse, like I try to avoid them at all costs yeah. or like try to optimize them the best I could. So when I first heard that it was a paid service, I was like, well, I don't know if I do that. Like, I really need to know what my benefits are. So how do you kind of try to woo those people over i guess what what do you think are the features that those people may particularly want that would make them want to have to pay for it versus going with a free service totally and i i'm in the same you know ballpark as you i i'm fee adverse i i hate paying fees (laughs) um whenever possible so there's really two things to think when it comes to this is there's there's online banks and there's budgeting apps and usually you don't have a combination of the bowl of of two of them. So normally you've got free, everybody expects to get like free online banking, especially with the new banks coming out like Chime and Borrow and Simple. You know, we needed to be competitive with those types of banks that offer free services and a lot of features. But at the same time, when it comes to budgeting software or apps, you've got YNAB, which is very popular. You've got Mm -hmm. every dollar um and those are paid services i mean those are for the if you want the premium stuff you're going to be paying a premium each month right um but then there are those free i guess you could call them budgeting apps obviously i'm the two i use is mint and personal capital yeah um and those are great for the past those only Mm. tell you what you've done and it's like looking in the rear view mirror if it's all you did was look in the rear view mirror, you're going to eventually crash. And the thing is, is 
with cube money, it helps you look towards the future. It helps you plan more. It helps you put your money towards like a future expense. And then you kind of stick, stick to it. Even myself, I've noticed like I'm a frugal person, but I don't really have like a budget that I'm yeah. like, Oh, did we go over budget this month? It's like, let's just put it on the credit card, get the rewards and then we'll pay it off. And for most people, it's like, there's no real concept of limit. It's just like, let's get what we need. Let's get the rewards. But then we get into this cycle of the rat race where we're constantly trying to pay down a balance on a credit card. Um, and we're not able to, to save money. So that's why to, to convince people why it would make sense to pay for something like cube money, I would just say, try the free version. If, mm. if that doesn't do it for you, um, you know, then, then you could stick with the way you've been doing it. But I think a lot of people would be really surprised with the, the empowerment that comes with just the free version. But a lot of people, um, we haven't gotten to this point, so I don't know 100%, but I would assume a lot of people would, would try the free version and say, you know what, there's, there's more that I'd like to be able to do. Um, and we can offer that. And we're competitive with the online banks because we offer a free service but we're also competitive with the, the budgeting apps that, that are out there that are paid services, so. Okay, so you actually brought up a good point and, and just kind of not wrestling reference to Q, but it made me kind of think with uh, credit cards and rewards and cash back and whatnot, um, obviously some people might not want to use debit card because then they're going to miss out on those cash back. So do you have either currently or plans for any kind of an integration or something that would um, sway the people who love their cash back deals? I'm, I'm one of those people. Like I love my credit card rewards. So, you know, <laughs> how would you kind of sway them to say, OK, you know, use Q because you're not going to miss X, Y and Z from your credit card because you're going to get this instead or similar to it? Yeah, I'm not going to lie. This one's hard for me. And I think anybody in the financial independence community knows because credit card rewards and those bonuses are, you know, highly enticing. talked about. Yeah. It's it's enticing and it's it's people that, that have self-control and can optimize their situation. Right. It makes perfect sense. Um, I've done it myself. My wife and I, we've had the companion pass um, and it's been great. Mm -hmm. And so there's really two things to keep in mind here is there's been studies that show that people will spend on average 17% more using a credit card versus cash. Mm -hmm. And so when you factor that in with the, with the rewards for most people, they might end up spending more money than they would have if they would have just been using cash, but that doesn't really work. That's not really a good argument for people in the financial independence community because they're like, well, I don't spend that much, you know, like I know what I need to spend and I just want to optimize it and spend it on credit cards. And I totally understand that. But I think something to keep in mind too is a challenge that I've given some people is, is just try it for six months or try it for a year and see if it doesn't change the way you spend or the way you think about money. Um, if it doesn't, you can stick with your rewards or you could just use a certain amount of spending or your discretionary spending with cube mm -hmm. um so that's that's kind of my thoughts on the whole credit card versus cash um concept but we're also doing something to try to like remedy that and make it easier for people to use their credit card and still um use it with cube so in okay. 2016 i don't know if you guys ever heard of a company called debitize mm, i think i'm familiar yeah. with that one so they launched in 2016. They were around for about two years, three years. I can't remember, but they actually got acquired by Trim Financial. So if you've heard of Trim, they help pay down um, like some of your debt and they cancel mm -hmm. your subscriptions and all those yeah. kind of things. So Trim acquired them and they haven't done anything with it. I'm not sure mm -hmm. if they have any mm -hmm. plans, but basically the concept of debit ties was it was basically a middle person between your credit card and your checking account. So whenever you swiped your credit card, what debitize would do is they'd say, okay, there was a purchase of $30 on your credit card. It would tell your debit card or your checking account and it would immediately pull from funds from your checking account to your credit card. So it's essentially like you had to know what was in your checking account because mm -hmm. it was gonna immediately pull a payment over to your credit card. So you could have multiple payments, you know, going to paying off your credit card so you're getting those rewards, but you're staying within that limit okay. of your checking account. 
So what we're hoping to do eventually, I don't know when, but this concept called car card sync, where you could actually link your cube or your, your account to your credit card. So when you would swipe your credit card, it would actually pull the money from your cube um, and pay it off. Okay. I don't know exactly the, the details of, of exactly how that will work, but we do want to try to make it easy for all those people out there that love their rewards to just use Cube and still see the results from it. Okay. And I guess in theory too is, you know, however much money you're earning in credit card rewards, if you're saving that much money by not overspending in certain categories and, you know, through using Cube, then in theory that kind of evens out. So if you were getting, you know, a few hundred dollars in credit card or credit card rewards, but you're also saving a thousand dollars in, you know, not overspending in different categories, then you're actually doing better than that. So that's a good point about that. And that that would be a really awesome feature about being able to connect it to eventually. Yeah. So yeah I, look forward I, to that. I definitely plan in my role at the company, I plan to do some research around that and really figure out like, what is most beneficial? Like, is there really a big difference for people that love their rewards and, you know, mm -hmm. can do all that stuff versus those people that just try it for a certain amount of time and saved a bunch of money and try to compare the two and see like, okay, based on our sample and, and research, here's what we saw based on the two different types of people. So we'll see. I think time will tell. Yes. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I'd be really interested in seeing um, how that study, because you're right, that would be a really interesting, um, you know, data point to to have. Um, you know, one of the things that I'm that I'm finding from your answers are that that you have all these incredible features that either are that are going to roll out with the with the app, you know, once you go live in um, Q1 of next year, or are in the works and but they don't seem just like features and bells and whistles. They actually seem to get to the psychology of how people spend their money, how people use their money and how people budget or don't budget. Um, um, I mean, I just, I'm very, um, I'm just very impressed by how you guys have really thought about like all of these different areas that people are interested in and their behaviors around money. Um, I, I have to imagine you guys have done some more than just market analysis. I almost feel like you must have like a psychologist on staff or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> no, we don't. We actually, the, the two founders, they all, they have background in financial planning and financial coaching. Mm -hmm. And you it. can learn a little bit more about their story and, and why they decided, decided to start this. And it's because they kept seeing people oh, time and time again, try to stick to a budget and fail. Yeah. And they're like, yeah. there's gotta be an easier way to, to do this. And they knew that the cash envelope system was super effective, but it was just hard to stick with over the long period of time. And, that, and like you said, it does come down to the psychological aspect of it too and, and the emotional side of money. And uh, so I actually so I actually did my master's degree in personal financial planning mm -hmm. and took some courses in um, like financial behavior, um, you know, communication and counseling and psychology type stuff around mm -hmm. money. And and for me what there's this concept, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of it, you could look into it, but it's called mental accounting where in our minds, we tend to bucket different things for different purposes. So even though all of your money might be, you know, in one checking account, we're, we're usually trying to bucket that money for different purposes in our brain, mm -hmm. which isn't usually that effective. Um, and that's why the cash envelope system is so effective. Or if you use like the bucket system or the jar system or something like that is because mental accounting is is dividing up your funds for different purposes and giving it, you know, each each dollar a job. By doing that simple act, you're way more likely to reach your financial goals, to save money, to pay down debt because you're you're thinking about your money in buckets versus in one big pile. Yeah. Yeah, no, that makes complete sense. And just as you were talking about that, I'm like, oh, that's exactly how, you know, we do look at money. And also it's hard, like you can use a budgeting app or something, but when you're at that cash register paying for your groceries, you're not thinking, well, I have 400, you know, dollars in my, my account and I have, 
you know, I think $150 of groceries in my cart. Like it's just, it's very difficult to, um, to kind of keep up with that, you know, when you're in real life, you know, when you're spending your money in real life, which is one of the, I think, biggest p appeals to um, Cube is that it's connected with point of sale. So you can make that conscious decision at point of sale. And, you know, I don't think that there's anything else that, on the market that I'm aware of that does that. There isn't. Yeah. Well, I, I can't wait to dive into it. I can't wait for you guys to roll out. I really think this is going to be a game changer. Um, I think you guys, I mean, I'm going to use the the D word disruptor. <laughs> I think you guys are definitely going to be a disruptor in the fintech space. And, um, you know, I wish you continued success with the rollout and cannot wait to, to dive in there myself. Yeah, I really appreciate it. And if any of your audience or listeners you know, wants to learn more, they can always visit our website. It's cubemoney.com with a Q. Um, right now we do have a waiting list. So um, if you if you jump on the waiting list, you will, you know, secure a position, um, but you can also move up that waiting list. When you join, you'll get a referral link. So if you share that link with your friends or family and somebody else joins the waiting list with your link, it'll actually push you to the front. Um, oh, nice. And so you'll get access to it sooner. We also have, um, like I think we've mentioned, lifetime memberships available, and that's only for a limited time. So for anybody that likes to save money in the long term, we're basically mm -hmm. asking for two months or two years of money up front, and you get access to all the features for life. Um, wow. And so that for me, that's one of those things where it's like, okay, well, if I know I'm going to be using this, I can put up front two hundred, you know, or three hundred dollars to to pay for this um, and save money in the long run. And that's that's going to be available probably until January, that lifetime membership offer. Um, so they can go to our website and learn more about that and see if that's something that makes sense. That's awesome. And yeah, we will definitely link to that in the show notes so that everybody can go check it out and learn more about it. Well, Scott, thank you so much for joining us today. This has been such a great conversation. Um, I, I think you're going to have a lot of success with Cube Money. And, um, you know, we really appreciate your time. You know, you got a new baby at home. So <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> good luck with that and hope you get more um, so restful nights for sure. <laughs> yep. Well, I appreciate it. I, I always in, enjoy and look forward to opportunities like this to talk about Cube Money. And I love what you guys are doing and keep spreading the fire message. <laughs> Absolutely. Great, thank well, you. Yeah. Thanks, Scott. All right. Well, that was our interview with Scott Henderson from Cube Money. Um, I hope you guys learned a lot about Cube and how it could potentially benefit you. You know, I certainly had a lot of ahas during our interview, Steph. Um, one yeah. of the things that really came up for me that really rather hit me really hard was when he was talking about intentionality. And this is something that you and I talk about all the time. I mean, every episode that we talk about, well, really every episode of Finance <laughs> One Thing is about intentional spending, intentional saving, living intentionally. But what he said about cube money and intentional spending really hit me um, where he was talking about it basically forces your spending habits to reflect your values and to mm -hmm. reflect where you truly want to be spending your money. And I use that that word force intentionally because there are just, I think with a lot of budgeting apps and budgeting tools, there are way too many loopholes, to be quite honest, that don't take into consideration people's psychology and their behavior. Just like I said in the interview, um, uh, and just in so many ways, it's so easy to spend outside of your budget, spend outside of your goals, you know, impulse buying and things like that. And so when you are forced to take the money out of a cube, out of a bucket at the point of sale, you know, at the cash register, or, you know, when you're buying online and you're forced to take it out of a bucket of money that has a specific amount for this specific, you know, uh, category, mm -hmm. it just really does force you to spend intentionally and to spend where your financial goals are, spend where your budgeting goals are. Um, and I just really love that it takes behavior into um, into effect. Yeah, I mean, that was really interesting. And one of the things that I liked, and 
I'm glad he kind of addressed this concern because I think it's a reality. It is a paid service. It's a paid app. Um, you know, as I said in the interview, I am fee averse. So, you know, the moment <laughs> someone tells you I have to pay for something, I'm like, mm, why am I paying for this? <laughs> but I think he made some really good points. You know, I liked what he said in terms of, you know, a lot of the free services like Mint and Personal Capital that we do still love and use, yeah, but absolutely. they kind of have their own purpose. Um, really, when you're using apps like that or services like that, you are looking in the past. And if you keep looking in the rearview mirror, like you said, eventually you're going to crash. And I think that they do serve a good purpose. You know, I love Mint, and this is actually one of the reasons that I do love using Mint is because it helps me see my spending trends. So I'll know if I'm overspending in a certain category or where my money is really going, and then I can determine if that's really where I find value or if I need to pick another option, much like the uh, the episode we did last week about, you know, where I was overspending on food. Oh, so bad. <laughs> so, yeah. But, you know, that's the thing is, is you're looking at your history, you're looking at your previous trends and a service like Cube Money helps you plan for the future and it helps you do it in real time. You know, yeah. so you're not having to think about like, oh, well, what did I set my mint category to or my budget category to for this month and how much have I used so far? It's there in the palm of your hand. All you have to do is open yeah. up the app and say, oh yeah, I've already spent $50 and I have a hundred dollar total budget. So cool. I've got another 50 to spend. Um, you know, so I think that that was a, a really interesting point. And then even then his other point was that they have a free version. So just mm -hmm. give the free version of try and you know I'm all game for that like give me a free trial any day I'll, I'll try your free trial <laughs> yeah and hopefully and I, you do like it yeah yeah I totally agree and something you said about paying fees kind of came to mind which is that we pay fees for the credit cards that we use right you know there are annual fees with a lot of the credit cards that we use because you get certain benefits that outweigh those that fee and so people have no issue with paying an annual fee for a credit card if it's going to net them, you know, $600 worth of, you know, travel benefits or whatever the yeah. case is, we we pay fees for lots of things in our lives. We pay subscriptions for lots of things. And certainly we should be um, conscientious and thoughtful about where we're actually spending that money and what things that we're subscribing to, because it is way too easy to subscribe to something. Mm -hmm. But there are benefits from some of those fees. And just with, with a credit card and an annual fee, with Cube, if you end up saving far more money than you're spending on your, you know, the monthly purchase price, depending on which plan you get, um, it's going to be worth it head and shoulders because you are saving money in the long run. Um, and so that's actually why we um, we wanted to make sure our audience had access to um, our URL if you wanted to sign up for Cube Money. Um, so it's winancefi.com slash cube, Q-U-B-E. And if you sign up using our link, make sure you use our promo code winance25, W-I-N-E-N-A-N-C-E 25, because you'll get 25% off your lifetime membership. Um, and lifetime membership is essentially paying for the first two years up front for free, or not for free, paying for the first two years up front. Um, and then you get the lifetime membership. Um, it is a 100% money back guarantee. That was why I was willing to take the chance and sign up for the lifetime membership because it was a 100% uh, money back guarantee, no questions asked. And um, again, I'm really looking forward to getting started with it. I just got my um, email the other day saying I could sign up and I went and filled it out as soon as I got it, uh, waiting for my card to come arrive in the mail. So I will definitely be sharing with you all my personal experience with Cube, what I like, what maybe I don't like, you know, pros and cons. Um, because we would never recommend anything to our audience that we didn't, one, want to try ourselves and we didn't think would be beneficial. So um, I'm excited to keep sharing, you know, my personal experience with you all. And if you want to sign up, make sure you use our link and our special code so you can get that 25% off the discount. All right. So I think that that's a wrap. That's a wrap. Well, we hope you guys like this episode a little bit different, um, but I hope you enjoyed that we brought in an interview, um, uh, somebody to interview. And um, if you did enjoy this and you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, leave us a comment and let us know because we're not doing it live stream. So uh, we want to know if you enjoyed this week's interview, what you liked, what you didn't like. Would you like us to interview more guests? And um, make sure you also like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Channel. And if you're listening um, on podcast, please go ahead and click the subscribe button and leave us, leave us a five-star rating and review so other people can find our content. And until next week, we'll see you guys later.
See everyone. Bye. Have a great week. Bye.